This video is brought to you by OKCoin Crypto Exchange, where you can buy, sell, and trade your favorite cryptocurrencies, and you don't have to pay high fees. OKCoin has very low fees, lower than many of the other crypto exchanges in the market. You can also stake your cryptocurrencies and keep 100% of the rewards. There are no fees. Other exchanges charge fees. OKCoin allows you to keep 100% of the rewards. Sign up with OKCoin, link in the description. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. With me today is Tim Vanderham, who's the SVP and CTO at NCR Corporation. Tim, great to be speaking with you. Hey, Tony. Great to be on the show today. Uh, can't wait for the conversation. Thanks for having me. Tim, I'm excited to speak with you because I've been seeing NCR making the crypto headlines huge partnerships and acquisitions. Uh, before we get there, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? Yeah, so I actually grew up in a small town in South Dakota on a dairy farm. So South Dakota, dairy farmer, grew up in the country, went to school at South Dakota State University, and then made my way into, into software for the last 22 years. Very cool. And before you worked at NCR, what, what did you do? I saw on, on your LinkedIn, you're at IBM and a few other companies. Yeah. So like I said, I went to college at South Dakota State University and I started my career in software as an intern at IBM after my third semester uh, and actually then went to school full time and worked full time at IBM uh, for 18 years. Left IBM, uh, went to Thomson Reuters in Dallas, Texas uh, for almost two years. And now I've had the privilege of leading the, uh, the software organization here at NCR for the last uh, just over three years. Now, I always ask everyone, what was their first encounter with cryptocurrency, whether they heard it from a forum or their mom told them or their cousin, whatever it is, and, and also what do you hold in your crypto portfolio? Yeah, so first heard of crypto and really the whole blockchain uh, while I was at IBM. IBM, obviously, was making a huge investment into blockchain, hyperledger, et cetera, et cetera. So was aware of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology really from the get-go back in 2013, 2014. Um, I'll say really got passionate about it as I was leaving IBM, seeing what they were doing. And when I went to Thomson Reuters in the tax division, I actually see blockchain and cryptocurrency and digital assets, if you will, being a huge part of real-time tax. Mm -hmm. So I got really motivated and really energized about that um, when I was doing tax. Uh, and then coming here to NCR and thinking about our business units of banking, retail, and restaurants, uh, it was a no-brainer. So kind of really passionate starting in 2017. Uh, in my wallet, and, and again, I don't, uh, uh, I don't give financial advice. I think it's always important for me to say that. Um, but I own Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Cardano. Um, and I know Cardano took a little bit of a dip today. I, I got the alert. But um, I'm really, really kind of high on Cardano personally. Very cool. Uh, so for the folks who are watching and listening, can you tell us about NCR for those who may not know? What, tell us about the history of the company, what services you provide, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so, so NCR is a 137-year-old company. Um, and, and formerly, NCR stands for formerly known as the National Cash Register. So we actually play a game with people, a lot of, you know, what do you think about when you hear NCR? And many times people say self-checkout machines, ATMs, um, a lot of hardware type solutions uh, that they would see at a bank. If you go to a bank, um, we're the share leader of all ATMs across the globe. Uh, if you go to a, a grocery store, uh, you see NCR at a self-checkout machine or a point of sale or a convenience store when you're filling up with gas. Uh, or you go to a restaurant and you'll wow. see our, um, our point of sale. Uh, you'll see our kitchen software if you work in the restaurant industry called Aloha, et cetera, et cetera. But really what we've been doing the last three years is shifting to being much more of a software and services led company. So we build software. I've got almost 4,000 engineers across the globe that build software that support consumers interacting with banks, restaurants, and retailers. And that could be physically in a store, in a restaurant, at a bank, or more importantly, above the store, outside of the store, using our digital banking, uh, mobile wallet application, uh, online ordering largely runs through us uh, for many restaurants. 
Same with grocery stores. If you do online order with pickup and delivery, we've got a whole software platform that enables that. Uh, so consumers have that, that ease and speed of interaction with our customers across our three industries. So that's what we do. We build a bunch of software uh, and we make consumers' lives easier as they want to bank, shop, and eat. That's amazing. Uh, you are essentially powering a lot of what people do day to day to transact into your point to make it faster and efficient. And what's very intriguing is that now you're integrating cryptocurrencies. Can you tell us about your crypto strategy? Yeah, actually, as you say that, you know, consumers interact with NCR one way or another, probably every day uh, of their life or at least every week. So we are powering commerce, powering banking. And so then to your question, why crypto? and What's our crypto strategy? Um, plain and simple, I want to make Bitcoin available on every block or put crypto on every corner. So when you start thinking about all those touch points from NCR, all the digital touch points, all the physical touch points, it's really about enabling consumers then to interact how they want to interact. And so if a consumer wants to leverage cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, digital assets, whatever you want to call it, I want to ensure they can do that uh, easily through all of NCR's touch points. So there's kind of three theses, if, if I can expound on um, our strategy uh, that we're starting with. The first is making it easy to buy and sell crypto, right? Mm -hmm. So is it easy to go acquire crypto through a digital banking app uh, in your mobile wallet uh, or going up to a CVS, for example, or a Rite Aid with cash and loading that instantaneously, giving cash to a cashier, scanning a QR code and putting Bitcoin instantaneously into your wallet. That's actually... Um, you know, what we got when we, when we acquired Liberty X or made the definitive uh, uh, um, message to acquire Liberty X. And we'll talk more about that, I'm sure, as we go. That's kind of thesis one. Thesis two, then, is um, how can we remit uh, money cross-border? Mm -hmm. So we believe we can leverage cryptocurrency, again, at financial kiosks, at self-checkout machines, at ATMs, and leverage a cryptocurrency rail to more easily and efficiently and safely move money from the US to other markets like Brazil uh, uh, and Mexico and Dominican Republic and Argentina and others um, down the road. And then the third area is payments, allowing someone to actually pay for their goods, pay for their grocery stores at Whole Foods, pay for their groceries at Whole Foods, pay for their uh, dinner at a Landry's uh, like Morton Steakhouse um, or you know transact uh, in a bank as you're starting to um, to move money around. So those are kind of our three primary theses on what NCR is going to do with crypto. That's huge. I mean, those are huge use cases and, and just with consumers around the globe. That's that's amazing. Um, so you're, you mentioned the acquisition of Liberty X, and I remember interviewing the CEO, Chris Yam, um, and I was pleasantly surprised when I found out about that. And how did that relationship come about in the acquisition? Yeah, so, um, you know, as I kind of came to NCR three years ago, it was on my mind that we had to tidy up some of our software strategy before I could really go all in around crypto. So a year in, kind of two years ago, if you will, really got serious about what are we going to do uh, in the crypto space? And it had to be a software focus. We've got, we've got plenty of hardware. So I didn't want to go out and look for a hardware acquisition. I want to go look for a software platform. And so about 15, 16 months ago, probably now, we found Chris and Kyle, the co-founders of Liberty X and Liberty Pay, um, forged a great relationship. Um, our strategies align as so they're a software platform first. They run hardware agnostically. Uh, they'd actually started to build a partnership with Cardtronics, who NCR has also now merged with over the last few months. And so it was kind of uh, almost a love at first sight. Um, got a great relationship with those guys. And then we were finally able to, you know, move through the process uh, and make the definitive uh, agreement to acquire Liberty X. And now we're working through the, um, the final regulatory um, aspects over the coming weeks. And uh, at Liberty X will officially be part of NCR in the, in the very near future. That's exciting. Uh, and, and which cryptocurrencies are you playing to support? Or I should ask, are you supporting now and are you planning to expand as well? Yeah. So today, um, sorry, I, I got a little jittery there. I'll, I'll start over. Uh, so today uh, we support Bitcoin uh, when it comes to buy, sell, and then leveraging Bitcoin to remit 
cross borders just to Brazil. So that's what Liberty X does today. Um, they're operating uh, in almost all 50 states and we'll plan to get to all 50 states. Uh, we'll plan to enable uh, that remittance corridor beyond Brazil to other countries uh, in the very near future as well. When it comes to the payment side, uh, we're also partnering uh, with Flexa. Uh, and so Flexa supports um, four different stable coins. And I think my last recollection is between 10 and 13 uh, different cryptocurrencies as a form of payment. So we'll leverage Liberty X's uh, technology and we'll build out our own wallet te uh, technologies and capabilities. So we'll be able to custodian for, for our consumers uh, in the NCR branded slash white labeled to our banks or our retailers or our restaurants, their own wallets as well. We'll leverage that technology and then through payments, we'll start to partner with Flexa uh, and possibly others as well. So, you know, we made this acquisition to make a big splash around NCR getting into crypto, again, Bitcoin on every block, but, um, but we're gonna continue to, to build out our ecosystem and work with partners to supply um, valuable solutions to our customers and consumers across the globe. That's, that's uh, just amazing. I, I'm just thinking about all the possibilities and how, you know, the infrastructure that you guys have set up already. And you mentioned Brazil and we see Latin America being almost like an untapped market and we see what's going on in El Salvador. You know, do you have plans to go in a target El Salvador, I'm assuming? Well, well, I mean, so NCRD does business in El Salvador uh, because uh, several of the largest banks there use our ATMs uh, and use our ITMs. So when you start thinking about the Chivo app uh, and now making Bitcoin a legal tender there uh, in El Salvador, when we made the announcement back on August 2nd, we immediately had calls from, from our banking partners and customers there in El Salvador. So, so the simple answer is yes. Um, you know, we're going to work through all of that and really the whole Central America, Latin America, South American corridors are going to be key for us uh, in our growth vector on, on how we can really enable uh, cryptocurrency to be that medium of choice um, for cross-border remittance. And then as other countries adopt Bitcoin or digital assets, and, and we obviously all know, all your listeners would know stablecoin, uh, we're going to have the technology underpinnings inside of all of our systems to support the speculative uh, cryptocurrencies as well as stablecoin. Now, can you walk me through a, just maybe a couple of scenarios um, where you bring it back to the to the real world application? Let's say someone's listening; they just got into crypto earlier this year. How can they leverage maybe your app and and you know what what can they do? So, like walk us through maybe the, the layman terms of of the application. Yeah. So so the simple way they're going to be able to leverage our app. Or, or better yet, I saw our technology and apps they already use mm -hmm. um, will be to um, link it to their digital banking account. Um, so if they have a digital banking app where they look at their savings account, their checking account, they'll be able to um, add a you know cryptocurrency into their into their view. So we have over 600 banks that use our digital banking solution. So if you bank at one of those uh, one of those companies. We'll be able to turn this on once those banks start to support that. So that's kind of the banking um, user example. Wow. And then if, if you don't want to do it through your bank, you want to be more of a cash user, um, which is happening quite prevalently across uh, the U.S. and the globe as well. You're able to download our technology. Um, we'll, we'll automatically. So today, Liberty X allows you to bring your own wallet. And you'll always be able to bring your own wallet um, in the future. But now that we've got a, a larger company, we want to make that more that simpler. We'll have a default wallet that we will custody your crypto for as well. And so that technology will exist. And so someone can walk in to literally anywhere you see an NCR logo, self-checkout machine, uh, financial services, ATM or kiosk at a bank or from Cardtronics at a CVS or a Rite Aid or to a point of sale. You'll be able to scan a QR code, um, pay with, with cash or debits, and automatically uh, have Bitcoin loaded into your wallet. So those are two very simple ways that people will be able to interact with our solution and acquire Bitcoin and uh, eventually other cryptocurrencies and store in that wallet. Wow. I mean, that sounds like such a great on-ramp and easy use for many folks in the, in, the, in the population 
who are not maybe tech, tech savvy or how to use exchanges and, and hardware wallets and so forth. That makes it a, very easy. It integrates into their digital banking account. Yeah, that's exactly the, the point of what we're trying to do is, is we look at the growth rate of the, the millions of users that are in crypto today and, and the, the, the rapid growth to a billion plus users across the globe. It's making it every day super simple for consumers to interact with. So uh, actually here in our, in our, in our GHQ, our, our headquarters in Atlanta, we've got a, a, uh, our CEO has a saying that says, big ideas, small words, simple sentences. Hmm. And so that's what we're doing around crypto. We've got this huge idea. It's clearly having a massive growth and adoption across the globe. And we're going to simplify that down and make it very simple for people to use and understand with small words and, and literally their digital phone or their mobile phone with their digital wallet they use every day. We're going to plumb the technology in for them. Wow. Um, and one thing I'm excited to ask you about because it's NYDIG, they are huge, lot go, lots going on there. Um, how did that partnership come about? And you, you mentioned banks, I'm assuming the infrastructure is being built with them for, with the banks and the credit unions. Yeah, absolutely. So, so NYDIG is going to be a partner or is a partner of ours as we launch kind of that digital banking type solution. Uh, and I talked about the three thesis I had earlier on buy, sell, uh, remit, cross-border, and payments. But when you start thinking about what else is happening in the market in the DeFi space, which NYDIG is part of around lending, uh, so around loan structures, starting to think about loyalty points and rewards, which we clearly are in the middle of when you think about retailers and restaurants. So we're going to leverage NYDIG. I, I mentioned Flexa. We acquired Liberty X. Um, we'll have kind of, I'll say, a dual partnership or a multi-partnership uh, model so that we can make sure we supply the services that our customers want, how they want them and where they want them. So super excited, you know, uh, Ross and Jan and, and the whole team there at uh, Stone Ridge and, and NYDIG specifically have been great to work with. And uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to building out um, that partnership and really offer amazing digital asset solutions uh, to our customers uh, from NCR. Now, I'm going to ask, I don't know if you can answer this question, but any bank names that you can let us know about that's within that 600 number? <laughs> so uh, unfortunately, I, I can't divulge uh, in this forum uh, any banks. But what I can tell you is the, um, the interest is so high. I mean, there's not a, a probably a day that goes by, definitely not a week that goes by with multiple days in it, that we're getting inquiries from our banks and our retailers and then restaurants around starting to be able to, to use payments um, as well. So, it, it, you know, uh, I can't wait to make some of those announcements. Uh, maybe I come back, Tony, and, uh, and, and we do some joint things maybe with uh, me and, uh, and some of our customers that are starting to adopt it. But uh, it's going to be really exciting. Uh, and, and I think we're just at, the, just at the beginning of that excitement. Absolutely. Now, we just touched on some huge things that you guys are doing. But I have to ask, um, anything you can give a hint on as far as what's on the roadmap for the remainder of 2021 and maybe into Q1 of 2022? Yeah, so, so I've touched a little bit on it. I'll just, uh, you know, the cross-border remittance right now to Brazil is our only corridor. Um, you'll start to see us open up um, other corridors like Dominican Republic, um, like Argentina, uh, like Mexico, etc. So you know, we're going to focus on that. And then we clearly know there's opportunities in Southeast Asia uh, and Africa as well. So no timeline on those yet, but we're going to be aggressive. We, we clearly went and acquired Liberty X and Liberty Pay for a reason. Um, and I only know one way to be, and that's aggressive and move quick. And so we're going to um, staff up our engineering teams post-close and make sure we're aggressively going after that. Uh, the other area that I touched on that Again, no timeline on, but you start to see what's happening in the market, um, and, and that is the, the lending, the loan side. And so that can be scary for banks, right? And we, and we get that. And not every bank is, is really accepting um, this conceptual model yet. But what I tell banks every day is, if you don't want to be there tomorrow, that's fine. But at some point, you are probably going to come to us as a trusted partner and say, okay, I need this functionality now. And I'm going to be ready for you. So I think we're a little bit ahead of the curve, which we need to be given we're a, a solution provider. 
But um, so I, I think things around lending are going to be really interesting uh, and, and not lending as we know it today in the DeFi space, but actually banks getting in to offering digital asset lending as well will be an area that I think will start to take off more in 2022 and uh, NCR will be ready. Well, that is uh, fascinating and bullish news, in my opinion. Um, and I could certainly just see maybe banks even offering staking pools and things like that, right? I'm sure those are probably conversations happening. Um, I, I think the, it's an endless uh, set of opportunities. And then clearly, it'll tie into how things are going to be regulated uh, as well. So, you know, we'll watch this space. It's ever-changing. Um, this technology is 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 changing and evolving and growing uh, faster than anything we've seen, you know, in my lifetime uh, and possibly ever when it comes to the tech space. And so, you know, we're ready to, uh, to engage, to embrace the, uh, the evolution and, uh, and support the ecosystem. Speaking of the evolution, let's, let's switch gears and talk about the market. Um, so Bitcoin obviously had a big uh, growth this year, a little bit of a pullback right now. You know, what are your thoughts on how the market has uh, continued to grow? Um, some are saying we're still in a bull market. Some are saying we're in a bear market. You know, what are your thoughts? And do you have a Bitcoin price prediction? Um, so so uh, again, uh, I don't know that I'll share a prediction. I think it's going to continue to grow. Um, I don't have an exact number of where I think it ends up. Uh, but I think um, as I look at the growth of adoption, uh, I, I think cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin can only continue to progress. Um, you know, I always like to share the fact, and I'm sure uh, many of your listeners know this, um, the 100 million or 150 million users we have today to 1 billion, the time frame of that is going to be half of the time frame it was for the internet to go from 100 million to 1 billion, right? It took eight, seven and a half, eight years for the internet to grow of that level of adoption. Right now, the forecasts are, you know, four and a half years for Bitcoin to go from 150, 130, 150 million we, we have today to 1 billion users. And I believe NCR is going to help drive hundreds of millions of those users into using Bitcoin. So if I think about that as the backdrop, I think it's only going to go up and to the right over time. Um, and I'm excited to see that. And I think it's going to be uh, um, a good thing for uh, financial uh, services for all of us as humans, as individuals. Um, and the technology that underrides it from a blockchain perspective, a cryptography perspective, um, a security perspective, I think is only going to help us uh, as well over time. And I just hope the government start to embrace it more and more, not only from a regulation perspective, but from a tax perspective and just making our lives simpler. Uh, so much is going on in the world today. You know, we want to make lives simpler for, for humans, for consumers, for individuals. And I personally think this technology stack uh, will help us do that over the coming months and years. Now, I know you guys operate globally and you talked about, you know, governments. Um, obviously, in the United States, we're still waiting for full clarity, I would say. There is some clarity. Um, what are your thoughts on the state of, you know, crypto regulations in the United States? We see, we, given the context of the infrastructure bill, and, and, and we're still waiting on some uh, clear guidelines. Yeah. And, you know, that's going to keep evolving. And I think people are still learning. Right. And so the thing that I say is, is that, um, you know, some people in, in the in the true Bitcoin world might might not like me for saying this, but I work in regulated industries today. So if and when it becomes regulated, um, I'm supportive of that. Now, I don't want uh, it to become regulated in a way where it can't uh, provide its full value to right. all of us as, as users and individuals. So we'll all have opinions on how far that regulation should go and, and how we would interact. Uh, again, we will be part of that process at NCR and, and working with our constituents in the various states and federal governments and then foreign governments as, as, we, as we look globally as well. Um, but I'm not scared of it being regulated. I just hope it's regulated in the right way or a good way where we can take advantage of all the benefit that it's gonna provide and still make it safe for us all to use and consume uh, and leverage in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, we see the trend of companies adding Bitcoin to their balance sheet, MicroStrategy, Tesla, and then some others, and now obviously countries adopting Bitcoin. Um, do you guys have any plans to add Bitcoin to your balance sheet? And, and do you think that trend continues? So no plans as of right now. I mean, clearly something we're well aware of given we, we acquired a company around this space. 
Um, I, I think the trend will probably continue. I think we'll have to all figure out what our palette is as individuals and as companies uh, of how we manage through that. The other area that I think is gonna be really interesting is how you use it for FX. Like us publicly traded companies um, uh, are, are always impacted positive and or negatively. And, and we're a, we do business in 160 countries. So we have a lot of that you know, flux every quarter, every year in our annual statement. How we can leverage cryptocurrencies and, and the cross-border money movement, <clears throat> again, fitting within the regulations as appropriate uh, and the laws as appropriate, can we leverage that uh, without putting it on our balance sheet, but leverage it to, to negate some of the FX headwinds uh, that we might get uh, as a company? Again, we have no plans to do that right now for NCR, let me be clear, um, but I, I do think there will be a trend, uh, not only putting crypto or blockchain or Bitcoin on your balance sheet, but also leveraging it in that FX model as well. Sure. Um, what are your thoughts on Ethereum 2.0 and DeFi? If you have any there, uh, obviously ETH is second largest crypto by market cap. And uh, I'm sure you guys are probably going to look to adopt that as well. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, we're going to expand uh, beyond Bitcoin for sure. Uh, clearly, we'll look at the market caps and we'll support um, the, the right currencies and the right assets uh, that we think our customers need for their consumers to interact with. Ethereum uh, will, will clearly be part of that, you know, just like on the payment side. Uh, Flexa has grown over the last six months of what they support and they offer. Um, Nidig, another one of our partners we've already talked about, also growing their um, currencies that they support. So, We'll follow the market trends. Um, you know, we will make sure that, uh, again, if I want to be able to enable crypto on every corner, I've got to be able to support what people want to want supported and want to interact with. And so we'll grow that over time within our wallet structure, within our tech stack uh, moving forward. Um, any plans to support anything FT, excuse me, NFT related? And do you own any NFTs? So I don't own any N NFTs. Um, uh, and, and we're still, um, I'll say, waiting on that one. We're waiting and watching. We're, you know, we're watching it. I, I clearly saw what Visa did, uh, which I thought was quite interesting um, here recently. But, um, you know, I'm not saying that we're not going to, but right now, nothing uh, of planned yet. Now, I will say internally within NCR, um, we've built out kind of an NFT concept on blockchain to use at internal hackathons, university hackathons, et cetera. So, it's not that we're turning a blind eye. We've got con concepts about it. We've created some of our own digital art, uh, digital offerings internally for people to start to learn about the, the concept and leverage the technology sake, um, the technology stack. But then we'll figure out what we uh, what we do externally um, over the coming you know months and, and into next year. Well, theoretically, because of the infrastructure you have globally, you could create one of the largest NFT marketplaces, but. I'm spitballing, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the number of transactions and, and humans that interact with our platform every day is hundreds of millions. Yeah. So you are absolutely right. Our reach when it, when it comes to people interacting with our technology um, in a bank, in a store, in a restaurant or on your mobile device is massive. Uh, and so that network effect, I think will get us a lot of opportunity and then we'll just need to make the good decisions on what bets we place uh, with our capital to build out new capabilities that people want. And most importantly, being a public company that we're going to be able to monetize at some level that's going to, uh, you know, improve our overall stock uh, for our shareholders. Very cool. Um, what are your thoughts on central bank digital currencies? There's talks from every central bank around the world, it seems like. The U.S., uh, they're talking about the digital dollar. Um, have you guys talked about that? And potentially when that rolls out, whether it be five years from now, that you would integrate that and be able to accept it as payment and things along those lines. Yeah. I mean, when I talk about stable coin earlier, um, that's exactly what this is, right? So the USDC, um, other centrally banked um, uh, coins, absolutely. And, and personally, um, I hope, and I don't think it should take five years. Like, like it, it needs to be the way that we start to interact in this digital age and, and digital world that we're living in today. So absolutely. Yes. We're going to support it. Um, I certainly hope that it, it, it happens fairly quickly. Uh, and I know I'll be continuing to work with 
um, the governments and, and the regulators and, and the decision makers on, you know, why it makes sense to leverage stable, you know, stable coin, um, you know, fiat backed currencies, uh, but in a digital format. Now, I think you touched on this item uh, earlier, but I want to go a bit more in depth as what is your vision or outlook for the crypto market? And obviously we talked, you talked about what NCR's role will be in that, but what do you, where do you see us in three years as far as adoption and how people are using cryptocurrencies and things along those lines? Yeah. So I see us, I see us nearing uh, a billion users uh, using digital assets and digital currency. Mm -hmm. I think it will be mainstream. Um, I think people will be uh, using it um, for literally every form of interaction that you might have. And so maybe it's not even buying something we start thinking about not only um, central banked digital currencies or speculative uh, crypt, uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or other altcoins. Um, when you think about what large companies are going to do, they're going to create their own digital asset for loyalty points. Yeah. You're going to start to see those loyalty points then be in an exchange over blockchain as well. Um, I'll go one step further and I'll start to sh talk about how um, those digital receipts will be will be itemized. And I think personally, us as consumers will share that data back with our other trusted providers of services and food and good and start to monetize um, that in micropayments by sharing data back so I can get better benefits or loyalty rewards or offers or discounts, etc. I really think this whole notion of not just cryptocurrency, but the underwriting technology is going to become core and center to virtually everything that we do and we interact with as humans, um, you know, on a daily basis. And that's going to take some time to get that kind of global uh, expansion. But a billion plus users uh, in the next three to five years uh, is going to make it pretty mainstream. Um, that is amazing. And I, I, I love hearing that from folks like you who are building uh, you know, and, and helping to move the market and, and the, the industry that in that direction. Um, okay, so I want to wrap it up here with some quick rapid fire questions, such as what's your favorite food? Favorite food, pizza. Uh, favorite musician or band? Uh, I'm a country guy, so I'd say low cash. Uh, favorite movie? Top Gun, that's an easy one. <laughs> Feel the need, the need for speed. Wait, the original or the, the newly... Sequel. Oh, the, the, the original for <laughs> sure. The original. Cool. Cool. Uh, favorite book. <laughs> favorite book is elephants can dance, uh, which is the Lou Gershner book. Uh, he came in with an IBM and I've learned a lot from that leadership team and helped me propel my career to where I am today. And I think it's a great book. I got to check that one out. Um, so when you're not at NCR and working, what are you doing for fun as a hobby? So I love to travel. I love sports. So I'm generally in an airplane uh, watching major sporting events. And actually, I'm getting on an airplane tonight to fly to the West Coast uh, to watch the Chicago Bears against the L.A. Rams on Sunday. Bear down, Chicago Bears. <laughs> awesome. Tim, a pleasure chatting with you and certainly want to have you back on because you're doing some great things and uh, excited to see the new updates coming from NCR. Well, hey, Tony, it was a pleasure. Uh, great conversation. Uh, and yeah, I can't wait to come back and actually share all the great things that we're doing here at NCR and how we're helping put Bitcoin on every block and crypto on every corner. <laughs>